A function, and I'm going to speak about it in very abstract terms right now, is something that will take an input. It will take an input, and it'll munch on that input. It'll look at that input. It'll do something to that input, and based on what that input is, it will produce a given, a given output. So, what is an example of a function? So, I could have something like f of f of x and x tends to be the variable most used for an input into the function and the name of a function tends to be f tends to be the most used variable but we'll see that you can use others but we could have f of x is equal to is equal to let's say x squared if if x is even and let's say it is equal to x plus 5 if x is if x is odd. So what would happen if we input 2 into this function? And the way that we would denote inputting 2 is that we would want to evaluate f of 2. This is saying let's input 2 into our function f. And everywhere we see this x here, this variable, you can kind of use this as a placeholder, let's replace it with our input. So let's see, if 2 is even, do 2 squared. If 2 is odd, do 2 plus 5. Well, 2 is even, so we're going to do 2 squared. So in this case, f of 2 is going to be 2 squared or 4. Now, what would f of, f of 3 be? Well, once again, everywhere we see this variable, we'll replace it with our input. We'll replace it with our input. So f of 3. So 3 squared, if 3 is even, 3 plus 5 if 3 is odd. Well, 3 is odd, so it's going to be 3 plus 5. It is going to be equal to 8. Now, you might say, OK, that's neat, Sal. This was kind of an interesting way to define a function, a way to kind of munch on these numbers. But you know, I, I could have done this with traditional equations in some way, especially if you allowed me to use the squirrely bracket thing. What, what, what can a function do that maybe my traditional toolkits might have not been as expressive about? Well, you could even do a function like this. You could have, and let me, let me not use f and x anymore just to show you that the, the notation is more general than that. So I could say h of a is equal to, is equal to the, the next largest largest number number that starts with the same letter the same letter as variable a oh, it says as variable a and we're going to assume that we are dealing in english so given that what is h of what is h of 2 going to be well, 2 starts with a t. What's the next largest number that starts with a t? Well, it's going to be it's going to be equal to 3. Now, what would h of I don't know, let's think about this. What would h of h of 8 be equal to? Well, 8 starts with an e. The next largest number that starts with an e, so it's not 9, 10, it would be it would be 11. And so now you see it's a very, very, very general tool. This function is, this, box, this h function that we just defined, we'll look at it, we'll look at the letter that the, the number starts with in English, and then the, so it's doing this really, 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 really wacky thing. Now, not all functions have to be this wacky. In fact, you have already been dealing with functions. You have seen things like, you have seen things like y is equal to x plus 1. This can be viewed as a function. We could write this as, y is a function of x which is equal to x plus 1. If you give as an input, as you give as an input, so let me write it this way. So for example, when, we could, when x is 0, we could say f of 0 is equal to, well you take 0, you add 1, it's equal to 1. f of 2 is equal to 2. You've already done this before. You've done things where you said, look, let me make a table of x. Let me take and, and put our y's there. When x is 0, y is 1. When x is 2, I'm sorry, this was when x is, I made a little mistake, where f of 2 is equal to 3. And you've done this before with tables where you say, look, x and y. When x is 0, y is 1. When x is 2, y is 
three. So this, you might say, well, what was the whole point of using the function notation here to say f of x is equal to x plus one? And the whole point is to think in these more general terms. For something like this, you didn't really have to in introduce function notations, but it doesn't hurt to introduce function notations because it makes it very clear that a function takes an input, takes my x, and in this definition, it munches on it. It says, OK, x plus one, and then it produces one more than it. So here, whatever the input is, the output is one more than that original function. Now I know what you're asking. All right, well, what is not a function then? Well, remember, we said a function is something that takes an input and produces only one possible output for that given input. So for example, something like, and let me look at a visual way of thinking about a function this time, or a relationship, I should say. So let's say that's our y-axis. And this right over here is our x-axis. And let me, let me draw a circle here that has radius, let me draw a circle here that has radius two. So it's a circle of radius two. This is negative two, this is positive two, this is negative two. So my circle, it's centered at the origin, it has radius two, so that's my best attempt at drawing, at drawing the circle. Let me fill it in. So this is a circle. The equation of a circle, of this circle, is going to be x squared plus y squared is equal to the radius squared, is equal to two squared, or it's equal to four. So the question is, is this relationship between x and y, here I've expressed it as equation, here I've visually drawn all of the x's and y's that satisfy this equation. Is this relationship between x and y a function? And we can see visually that it's not going to be a function. You pick a given x, let's say x is equal to one, let's say x is equal to one, there's two possible y's that are associated with it. This y up here and this y down here. And we can even solve for that by looking at the equation. When x is equal to one, we get one squared plus y squared is equal to four. One plus y is equal, y squared is equal to four. Or subtracting one from both sides, y squared is equal to three. Or y is equal to the positive or the negative square root of three. This right over here is the positive square root of three, and this right over here is the negative square root of three. So this situation, this relationship, where I inputted a one into my, my little box here, and associated with the one, I associate both a positive square root of three and a negative square root of three. This is not, this is not a, not a function. I cannot associate with my input two different outputs. I can only have one output for a given input.